we got a lot of news to get into here today, and normally we start with all of the news, but believe it or not, the Raw review tonight actually has news. We have a brand new WWE champion, Drew McIntyre, meeting Randy Orton in the main event of the show with the Claymore. He is the new champion, and that means things have changed at Survivor Series. It is now going to be Drew McIntyre versus... Roman Reigns in the champion versus champion match. Rushing it on a pay-per-view with a week's build. And I guess we see where things go with Randy Orton in The Miz. Yeah. Um, I don't know what... Um, I mean, I suppose they could do something with The Miz. I don't know what they're going to do with Randy Orton as far as the pay-per-view goes. But, I mean, there's a million different things they could do. I mean, they could he could interfere and cost, um, you know, uh, Drew McIntyre the match on Sunday. Uh, but yet yeah, the they also had um, so the situation with um, the women they switched um, Peyton Royce and Lacey Evans for Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke. So um, obviously, if you watch the show, you could see that uh, Mandy Rose was legitimately legitimately injured last week. Um, she came down on her shoulder while working with Nyla, uh, Nyla Rose with Nia Jax, and um, I. Didn't see. I, 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 I was that even on camera. The the exact thing that happened. Oh yeah. Okay. I mean, you couldn't really see what happened, but Nia grabbed her, and she went to throw her through the ropes, and that's right. Then she, she kind of got caught in the ropes and she grabbed got caught her in the ropes shoulder and landed, yeah. and landed on her shoulder. That's right. I remember the spot now. Yeah. 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 I mean, was... as much as people like to blame Nia, and it may very well have been Nia's fault. I mean, it didn't look like anything. I, I didn't think it was that Nia's stuck fault. out as as anything that Nia did I, wrong. I, I didn't think that that one was Nia's fault because she it, it, she just got her legs hooked and landed on her shoulder. So that was like, um, yeah. So th- so that injury was legit. And if you watched, like they just got her out of the match really quick, and then they did a worked injury on Dana Brooke uh, for whatever reason. They didn't just want Dana Brooke in, and they brought in Peyton Royce and Lacey Evans. And this is like right after Peyton Royce had like. Uh, tweeted something like, I'm not Dude, when she did that tweet team. about how she wasn't going to team with anybody else, it absolutely was not going to happen, no joke or whatever she added to it, I was like, do you know who you work for? Like, the moment they see that, there's going to be an angle tonight where you're with Lacey Evans and you're going to be hugging each other and together as a team. And sure as shit, that's exactly what happened. Yeah. So, I would say it, um... Hmm... I don't know if it's I I I would call it a lateral step. I don't know that it's it's it doesn't feel like it's anything better, but I don't think it was anything worse. Um, well, I mean, it's going to be bad for her because it was her best friend for from childhood. But quite frankly, as far as match quality goes, it probably will be a little bit better with Lacey Evans. I guess. Um, I I don't know. I mean, a before, Lacey is a little bit better than Billy Kay in the ring. Oh, no, no, I'm not talking about Billy Kay. Yeah, yeah, Lacey Evans is better than Billy Kay, but I don't know. I was talking about the match itself. I don't know that... Oh, the Survivor Series match? Oh, who knows? It's, it's. I mean, of the four, Mandy Rose is the best of the four. But um, either way, that's a that's a weak team. Shayna Baszler, Lana, Nia Jax, Lacey Evans, and um, Peyton Royce. That, that may be the weakest team. Is that the weakest team in the history of Survivor Series? I feel like there might have been some... Matches in the early '90s involving clowns and and such that that could potentially have been worse. I suppose I suppose I suppose like that one of those Jerry Lawler and the clowns against yeah. um yeah 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 I I suppose you know when you know the comedy stuff there were some really bad matches that's true but I mean I would say like of recent times modern times um it's a pretty damn weak weak match um, a weak team um and the storyline is just so weird. You know, because the whole idea of the whole story was that um, Nia Jax has been attempting to injure Lana for like every every single week to get her off the team, and somehow she's not off the team, but two other women are are off the team. And um, reckoning of retribution, Mia Yim is the one who injured um, is being credited for injuring Dana Brooke. So um, I don't know, you know. I Shouldn't guess. she be on the damn team? I mean, it's a kind of a lame way to get in there, but I mean... I don't know. She did take somebody out, so if you're trying I, to beat I, the SmackDown brand... Well, I mean, here's the thing. It's like it's like th- there's all these matches where you're supposed to um, qualify, and then they end up just 
two women just show up and they're on the team. With Especially no since our angles on on SmackDown, where where women are asking, like, "Can you just put me on the team? Why do I have to qualify? Just put me on the team." Ah, oh, the rules are you got to qualify. Yeah, well, except on Raw. Well, I mean, the injury the the, the injury was um, did kind of throw things off. So um, you know, and you do have to have five people. I was just thinking, like, you know, if it's not going to be reckoning, and it's it'd be weird to have like a retribution person in it, but not that weird considering everything. Um, but yeah, it's just a, just a team there. So, um, yeah, I mean, as far as the Orton thing goes, um, the deal is, is that I, I guess on, um, you know, once Drew McIntyre showed up on Friday, I guess that was pretty much it. I thought it was like so obvious that, that, that it was funny because when I, when, when it happened, I go, this is so obvious that, that Drew McIntyre is going to win that they're probably going to do something else. But in fact, I was told, um, that, it's so obvious because that's exactly what they're doing. Um, so you know, this the begs story. the question. Obviously, if 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 Drew is just going to win the title back on television, I mean, maybe they wanted. I mean, maybe it sweeps. I mean, are we in the middle it's of not, sweeps right now, or what the fuck's going on? Like, why did it does, you? It, it, sweeps aren't important when it comes to cable. Why did really. you beat Randy Orton, or why did you beat Drew McIntyre? Just, just because they and have then nothing. just put the belt right back on him again. Because they got nothing going on, and they'd already done a bunch of Randy Orton, um, Drew McIntyre matches that Drew McIntyre kept winning, and to keep it going, um, they had to have Randy Orton win one, so they did. But in the end, I mean, yeah, you could have hold, held off to the pay per view, but I guess they wanted a babyface heel dynamic in this match. I mean, Roman Reigns and Randy Orton would have been such a nothing match. I mean, really, it's just it's it's been not even that it's been done before. And and technically, I yeah, I know technically as a wrestling match it would be fine. They're both good wrestlers, but it's it's two heels that the eventual thing would be that everybody would cheer Roman Reigns and they're not really looking for that this week, you know. So this is what they do. Roman Reigns and Drew McIntyre is kind of like the battle of the top dog in each brand. I mean, you know, Drew has been the one that's since before WrestleMania, you know, has been you know, since the Rumble, really, has been pushed as the top guy on one side. And Roman Reigns has destroyed everyone on the other side. Or actually, his, brother, his cousin's destroyed everyone on the other side. But he's still the top guy. Um, he's destroyed his cousin twice. So, yeah, you know, so you, you have that. I mean, there's no, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I mean, there's no great prize in who wins, and I'm sure that the finish has to be gimmicked in some way because I don't think they want either of them to lose. But as far as, like, the dynamic of a match, it's, you know, it's 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 the strongest match you could put on now. So now I know what the argument is, is, you know what, and, and this is a real valid one, if they were going to do this, don't you think it would have been smarter to do it two weeks ago? So you get a couple of weeks of build of this, and then when McIntyre Dude, If you're came doing on, Roman Reigns and Drew McIntyre like it's some kind of dream match, then absolutely you should, should not be done on, on six days' notice. But, I mean, the bigger thing to me is this is like the third time. It might be the third time in three straight years. I'd have to go back and look, but... They switched at the end? Well, the <laughs> Survivor Series is coming up, and all of a sudden they realize it's going to be Jinder, Mahal, and Brock. Oh, well, we oh, can't have that, so we'll, well take the okay, title okay, off okay. Jinder. And- okay, okay, well, the, 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 okay, this one probably was always the plan, whereas with Jinder, it was absolutely not the plan. And then the all same thing happened with Jinder, the same thing happened with Daniel Bryan yeah. to get him yeah. to face Brock. And it's kind of like, maybe Survivor Series shouldn't be champion versus champion, so well, we don't run into these that's a, issues. That's a diff- That's a completely different... Well, I mean, from the from day one, I told you, like, the, the whole idea of this card was just, you know, this is what we do. You know what I mean? We have the champion versus champion, even if, you know, whatever. It's like... The matches don't have to be don't have to be intriguing and and you know they've done some build for New Day and Street Profits and I guess that there's you know it's kind of like the 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 new version of the old versions you sort of could say I think that that's kind of a interesting match uh, Bobby Lashley and Sami Zayn you know I mean there's been promos but I don't really I think everybody sees that as a squash even though Sami Zayn's like much better than Bobby Lashley they're gonna work it as a squash and then. Um, I mean, the women's match on paper is a is the probably the best women's match. Not probably is the best women's match they could put on in the entire company right now, and hopefully, you know, it'll turn out that way. So, I mean, as far as lineup goes, I mean, it it it, it is a good lineup. Um, the build, but it is like paint by numbers, you know, and you don't have to. But this, I think that that's just what what it's going to be from now on at Survivor Series is. All the champions matches and the two elimination matches, and that's just what's going to be 
because it's you know that's they've they've tradition out they've they have this whole thing of tradition now and they're just going to follow it and it's an easy one because you don't really have to book anything you just kind of throw it together and there it is but you know again like looking at it it's really not i mean now that the card's all pretty much settled it's a pretty good card i mean the um the women's elimination match is weird because really i mean if you look at that women's match could be a disaster because except for um bianca belair I mean, I mean, Ruby Riot's a good worker and all, but except for Bianca Belair, it's kind of like I feel like there's it's not all that interesting. I mean, like Shayna, I mean, I guess Shayna can work with the right situation, and and you know, and I mean, and it works. Nia Jax is just a nothing. Lacey Evans is fine, but she's like gotten no push, and she's not over or anything like that. I mean, you know, she's definitely improved. Peyton Royce is just there, and um, Lana is is not a good wrestler, you know, and um, and they portray her as, as such a not a good wrestler again this week. I mean, Jesus Christ, it's it's um, I mean, I know that they're probably going to have something where she puts Nia through a table someday, and um, you know, in another month or so, and it'll be the big payoff and every and, and all that, but. Jeez, you know, I don't know. It's still, I mean, she should be a manager. I mean, it's like not everyone, not everyone who's a woman needs to be a wrestler if they're like a really great talker. I mean, it's the same with Zelina. You know, it's like, what benefit of, was Zelina Vega? And I mean, now it doesn't matter anyyway. But what benefit is of Zelina Vega to be a wrestler when she's a marginal at best wrestler when she's a, a great manager? Be like, uh, like uh, 20 years ago or 30 years ago, 25 years ago, Bill Watts going, you know what? I'm going to break up Jim Cornette in the Midnight Express. I'm going to make Jim Cornette a wrestler. That's actually what it's like. It's like, well, that's stupid. He's going to be a terrible wrestler. And it's like, yeah, but they've been to together as a team for too long. They've been together for nine months. And, and what do you do with a tag team? You break them up. And they actually do that. Hey, so. if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 Audio shows at your fingertips.